Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. I'm continuing my series on the symbols of the Holy Spirit. The cloud is a symbol for the Holy Spirit. The presence of God was often concealed in a cloud and revealed only to those who stepped into that cloud. Likewise, the presence of the Holy Spirit holds the presence of Jesus those who walk in the Holy Spirit can see Jesus for who He is. Before we get into that lesson, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're getting right into the lesson. Here is Stephen Moctezuma.
And if you enjoyed that song that Stephen Moctezuma sang, a beautiful worship moment, then make sure you go and download his latest album, which is now on all the major music platforms. All you have to do is go type in Stephen Moctezuma on your preferred platform. Now to the message. You know, I've heard tremendous stories about many great men and women of God. But one of those who has inspired me most is a woman by the name of Catherine Coleman. And I know people personally who have actually been in her meetings. And there are eyewitness accounts where this woman of God would walk out onto the platform. And as she would begin to lead the people in worship, really she was just worshiping, but as she began to lead the people in worship, many eyewitnesses report seeing a physical, visible cloud appear right there on the platform with her. This was not a one-time occurrence. There are many different stories like this regarding this great woman of God, Catherine Coleman. Now, I by no means am trying to elevate this woman beyond where she should be elevated, but we should be inspired to know that the presence of the Holy Spirit could envelop us like that cloud. You know, whenever you see the cloud in the Old Testament, and in some instances in the New Testament, you'll see that the cloud holds or carries or conceals the presence of God or the presence of Jesus, the Word. And only those who step into that cloud can actually see or experience the fullness of the glory of God. The cloud holds the glory. Exodus chapter 24, verses 15 through 18 say this, Then Moses climbed up the mountain, and the cloud covered it. And the glory of the Lord settled down on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from inside the cloud. To the Israelites at the foot of the mountain, the glory of the Lord appeared at the summit like a consuming fire. Then Moses disappeared, I love that, Moses disappeared into the cloud as he climbed higher up the mountain. He remained on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Now there is a lot that we can glean from this one portion of Scripture, but I want to point out to you what I just said to you and how it's reflected here in this portion of Scripture. The cloud concealed the presence. The cloud concealed the glory. And as Moses ascended the mountain, he stepped into the cloud. And when he stepped into the cloud, he discovered the glory of God. The cloud is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Those who walk in the Holy Spirit, those who search the depths of God by the Holy Spirit, come to know the glory of God. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the glory of God. Now, Moses spoke with God in that cloud. Exodus chapter 34, verses 32 to 35 say this, Then all the people of Israel approached him, and Moses gave them all the instructions the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking with them, he covered his face with the veil. But whenever he went into the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he would remove the veil until he came out. Then he would give the people whatever instructions the Lord had given him, and the people of Israel would see the radiant glow of his face, so he would put the veil over his face until he returned to speak with the Lord. So in that cloud, Moses receives a glow. In the cloud is the glow of the glory. And when you go into the cloud, when you walk in the Holy Spirit, you begin to radiate the glory of God. The cloud also represents guidance. In Exodus chapter 13, verse 21, the Bible says, The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with the pillar of cloud, and He provided light at night with the pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. Now, wherever the cloud would go during the day, the children of Israel would go. When the cloud would stop, the children of Israel would stop and they would camp. In the same way, the Holy Spirit guides our spiritual lives. He provides direction and clarity for the path ahead. As we follow the presence of the Holy Spirit, as we go with Him wherever He leads in our lives, sometimes He'll keep us moving and other times He'll say, rest here and remain and abide. The Holy Spirit guides us through all different seasons of life and in that cloud, 
we find our guidance. The priest, when ministering, experienced that manifestation of the cloud, and that cloud that appeared actually prevented them from being able to perform their priestly duties. In 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 13-14, through 14, the Bible says, It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with the cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. I want you to notice here that worship precedes the covering of the cloud. The Bible says that when the trumpeters and the singers were as one, when they made their sound as one, when they lifted their voices and their instruments of music as one to worship God, then the cloud appeared. The scripture tells us that God inhabits the praises of his people. When we begin to glorify Jesus, the Holy Spirit shows up. The Holy Spirit is attracted to any atmosphere where Jesus is being glorified. Why? Because that's one of his tasks, is to glorify Jesus, to, to point to Jesus, to point to the Lord. So there's so much here in this portion, but I want to focus in on, on this idea that when we worship, when we magnify the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit shows up. Now, when I say the Holy Spirit shows up, I'm not saying literally he shows up because he's always with us and he can't get any closer than within us. So the Holy Spirit doesn't come and go. Rather, when we worship, we become aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit. So when I lift the name of Jesus, when I begin to praise Him, when I begin to worship Him, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit's presence and power is present. And then we begin to see the miracles. Then we begin to see His work. That's not why we worship God, but it is a result of our worship of Jesus nonetheless. For when Jesus is glorified, the power of the Holy Spirit is manifested. As we worship Him, as we sing, as we lift our voices, as we obey Him, we are emitting from our lives this sound of worship and praise, and the cloud is attracted to that worship. The cloud is attracted to that glorification of Jesus. The presence of the Holy Spirit also manifested in the form of a cloud at the transfiguration of Jesus. Matthew chapter 17, verses 5 and 6 say this, But even as he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. Listen to him. The disciples were terrified and fell face down to the ground. The glorious presence of Jesus, that, that manifestation of the glory of the Son of God, happened when the cloud showed up. The cloud reveals and conceals the presence of God. Why is that? Because only those who walk with the Holy Spirit can be trusted with the glory of God. Only those who are one with the Holy Spirit, only those who have given themselves to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, can step into that more, can step into the greater, and experience the glory of God. So the Holy Spirit's presence conceals and reveals the beauty, the majesty, the glory of Jesus. The cloud represents the Holy Spirit's guidance and glorious presence in your life. This cloud is an invitation. And those who are born again can step into that cloud. Those who are born again and are saved and are redeemed have the privilege of walking in that glory, of seeing sides of God's nature, of seeing aspects of His character reserved only for those who love Him. I want you to experience that cloud. I want you to walk into that place where you know Him, where you see Him, shining bright, countenance full of light, the glory of God. That's the invitation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the cloud. The Holy Spirit is the guidance of God in your life. The Holy Spirit shows up in a manifested way when you glorify Jesus. And the Holy Spirit's presence conceals and reveals the presence of Jesus to those who love Him. 
I want to pray now. My prayer is going to be simple. My prayer is that you would be overtaken by the cloud. That the smoke of heaven would fill your room right now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus. Some of you are beginning to sense something right now. Make sure you're sitting down. And if you're driving, I do not recommend. You, I, I'm, being, I'm not being funny. I'm being serious right now. If you're driving, I do not recommend you, you listen to this. Turn this off if you're driving. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you manifest the glory, the presence of the Holy Spirit around that one receiving this prayer. Let them be covered in the cloud. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your presence. Transform us in that cloud and let us see the beauty and the brilliance of the countenance of Christ in the name of Jesus. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. There's someone watching me right now. With a, there's a problem with your left ear. I believe you're deaf in your left ear. The Holy Spirit just touched you. You're beginning to hear out of that ear right now. That's the presence of God touching your life. There's someone else, there's a, there's a tumor on your knee. I see a growth on your knee. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that right now. That tumor goes in Jesus' name. Someone else with respiratory issues, God's healing you right now. I thank you, Father. Lord, let this healing virtue begin to flow and touch your people all over the world. In Jesus' name. If you believe God healed you, I want you to go have your doctor check you. I, didn't have, I don't have to call out your healing for you to be healed. I believe that healing virtue is flowing right now. I didn't expect that. It just started flowing. But if you've been healed and you believe you've been healed, and again, I emphasize, I do not have to call out your sickness in order for you to be healed. But if you believe you were healed, go have your doctor check you and then write to us. Let us know about the miracle that God did in your body. Wow. That's it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because, sincerely, I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, you might be looking for an online church. Make Spirit Church your home church. Just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash Spirit Church right now. Sign up. It's absolutely free. I'll send you a free weekly teaching. Steve will send you a free weekly worship video all in one email. So you get that on a weekly basis. And when you watch that lesson, when you join in that worship, you're doing so that week, maybe not exactly at the same time, but that week you're worshiping to the same song as thousands of believers all around the world. You're receiving the same word as thousands of believers all around the world. So join the Spirit family today. It's our online church. Be a part of it. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash Spirit Church. Now to your comments. And these comments come from a couple weeks ago. This is the installment I did on the symbol of light. So symbols of the Holy Spirit, light. And by the way, if you haven't seen that teaching, make sure you go back and watch that teaching. It talks about how the Holy Spirit illuminates and gives revelation. If you're confused in this season or looking for the direction of God, I highly recommend you go back and watch symbols of the Holy Spirit, light. And while you're at it, wherever you're watching us on, make sure you join in on our platform. So if you're watching on Facebook, like us on Facebook. If you're watching on Instagram, follow us on Instagram. And if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to click that subscribe button right now. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any new content from us. And while you're at it, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section, and I may read it on next week's edition of Spirit Church. So here are the comments from a couple of weeks ago, Symbols of the Holy Spirit, Light. Angelina writes, thank you, Diga and Stephen. I always look forward to each new video and live stream. God is certainly working through this church, and I am glad to be able to say I finally found my church. God bless you all. Well, Angelina, welcome home. The next commenter writes, The description you made when you started the message fits me well. It's like the content is always coming exactly when I need it. Although the illuminating light of the Holy Spirit has been at work in me, I didn't really realize it until I noticed just how different my character has become. Thank you, Pastor David. You are touching more lives than you know. God bless and strengthen you and the Spirit Church family. Amen. Well, I do want to say that this is the Holy Spirit's channel. We get messages like that all the time where people say, 
It's like, you're, you're, it's like you know what lessons to put out every single week. And I'm telling you, we're instructed by the Holy Spirit as we go. So it's always going to be a word in season. Ginny Leroy writes, you inspire me more and more every day. I am the person I am today because of you. I received the gift of speaking in tongues through this ministry. Wow. God bless you more and more. My spirit is filled with joy every day. I thank you from South Africa. Ginny, that blesses me more than you know. And we give, of course, all the glory to God for everything He is doing in your life. And the final comment comes from Amanda Debra, who writes, Thank you, David Hernandez, for another inspirational teaching on the Holy Spirit. I'm beginning to learn and understand the personality of the Holy Spirit through your teachings and Christ's undying love for me. God, continue to bless you and the awe-inspiring music of Stephen Moctezuma. Sending love all the way from London, UK, Amanda. Well, God bless you, Amanda, and it's awesome to see how God is touching lives all around the world. We see Amanda from the UK. We see Ginny from South Africa. Think about what Ginny said in her message. She received the gift of speaking in tongues through this ministry. She says, I, I'm the person I am today because of you. You know, we, we know it's not because of me. We know it's because of the Lord, but it's through this ministry, his ministry that he's working. These are lives that are being transformed. We receive messages like this all the time. People are getting saved. People are getting healed. People are getting delivered. People are getting baptized with the Holy Spirit. People are receiving the evidence of speaking in tongues for the first time. I don't know how many times I've received a message from people saying, I've tried so many times to receive the gift of speaking in tongues, and today it broke and I have it. And this blesses me. I know it blesses you. We want to continue to preach the gospel. Now, don't turn this video off. I need to tell you something. It's urgent because the day and the hour is late. We are in, I believe, a very, very historic moment in the history of the world. And right now, more than ever, please hear me. We need bold preachers of the gospel who will not consult with the world's culture to develop their messages. I do not consult the culture of this world. I do not consult the philosophies of the age. I do not consult the ideas of this generation. When I preach the word, I consult the Holy Spirit himself and the word of God. And we need now more ministries who are not afraid to stand and boldly declare that Jesus is the way, that people need to repent from sin, that people need to receive the gift of salvation. We need preachers of the gospel. So join with me. My promise to you is this. I'm not going to stop preaching Jesus. I'm not going to stop preaching repentance. I'm not going to stop preaching the truth. The world can come against me. They can criticize me. They can call me whatever they want. They can try to cancel me. I'm going to preach Jesus, period. So I need you to stand with me. You see left and right ministries and churches that are, that are, that are going along with the agenda of the age, that are compromising their faith to accommodate the agenda of the age. And we need more ministries to stand now. So stand with this ministry. If you're tired of seeing ministries that, that, that conform to the world and start preaching a different gospel, if you're tired of seeing people do things along with the agenda of the world and you want to stand behind a ministry that's going to be bold and not compromise, then stand with us. Stand with us and join hands with us and join hands with the thousands of people around the world who have partnered with this ministry on a monthly basis. We need your financial support because we are fighting for the soul of a generation and we need resources so that we can continue to create content and continue to get it out all around the world. It's about souls, souls, souls. So join with me. Join with me. Stand with me. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Stand with me. Become a monthly supporter of this ministry today by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Sign up for a monthly gift. Give us resources that we can use to further the gospel. If you don't want to sign up for a monthly gift, you can go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate for a one-time gift. But whatever you do, do it today. Do it right now. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you now. Ask Him. All I'm asking you to do is go to the website. Go to, if you feel the Holy Spirit leading you to do one time or partner, go to either one. But open that page and then ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, how much do you want me to give monthly? Or ask Him, Holy Spirit, 
How much do you want me to give right now one time? Let him speak to you and then obey. That's all I'm asking. Open that page, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Put the form in front of you and then say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? Let him speak and then do what he asks you to do. Help us win souls. Get behind this great cause as we bring transformation to the world through the preaching of the gospel. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.